We're the team of teenagers with attitudes. So this will most likely be my final anime video. I know, I know. Cal calm down. It's over now. But if this isn't your thing, on Friday I'll be releasing a video where I bully the panther, so stay tuned for that. This is a Patreon request video on the historically influenced show Kantai Collections, which is based off a game from what I understand. But unlike Girls and Panzer that spits trivia left and right, this show has historical references more in the lore of the world than ones outright said by the cast, although there are a lot more towards the end. So the format of this video will be a bit different from the previous ones like this. The basis of this plot is very anime. Offensively anime, if you ask me. In Mighty Morphin Ship Girls, the world is under attack by vague bad guys, and girls, who are a personification of battleships, go out to fight with them on the high seas. But the history comes in with all the girls being named and modeled after battleships from the Imperial Japanese Navy in World War II. I actually had a fun time looking up their real-life counterparts as they were introduced to the show and seeing which ships survived the war. It was not that many. In relation to this, there seems to be a correlation between the size and class of the real world ship to the physique of the character playing it. About halfway through, I started thinking in depth about this and realized that when Yamato came on, she would most likely have gigantic turrets. Oh my god, I was right! But the outfits they wear to look like ships are pretty creative, I'll give them that. There are a handful of references to the war in general, though. Lack of supplies and consumption of fuel is a recurring theme. The fleet girls' commanders are often talking about how they have to do a lot with very little, and this is often the situation that the Japanese Navy and the Japanese Armed Forces, if we're being honest, had to deal with as the longer the war went on, supplies dwindled. And this often became exacerbated with the large amounts of resources the larger ships consumed to get from place to place. This is actually shown in the series via how much food is required to keep the girls going, and it is scaled based upon ship size, with the Yamato obviously eating a lot. Speaking of Yamato, she was probably the best part of the series for me. And not for that reason. But because of how the show blatantly shits on the ship's performance in World War II, in the episode where she is introduced, aptly titled I Am Not a Hotel, it is mentioned how she has never fought and has been purposefully kept in docks because the loss would be too big of a hit to morale. There's even a scene where some of the girls attempt to tow her out to sea, but they comment on how heavy she is and how it's extremely difficult referencing the size and weight of the real ship. For more information on the real Yamato, go here and check out my video on it. Other references include concerns over the fleet girls' codes being broken, which was accomplished by the United States during World War II by mid-1942 and continuing throughout the war. A fair amount of infighting between the different characters, which, although vague, could be references to the infighting within the Japanese military between the branches. And lastly, the order in which the ships, or girls, are sunk or damaged that roughly attempts to fit what happened historically. Except for some glaring errors at the end. This show is extremely upset with the fact that Japan lost World War II. The vague enemies that I mentioned before clearly have to be the Americans if the girls are so minutely modeled as the Japanese Navy. The issue with this, though, is that the girls are the main characters and therefore have to win, and the showrunners use this as their out to create an alternate history where Japan defeats the U.S. And I know that seems a little accusatory, but if they wanted to keep it more broad, they probably could have. I mean, the last battle is obviously the Battle of Midway, given the thinly veiled codename for it. I actually looked it up, it is just the Japanese codename for the Battle of Midway. And how that battle is laid out. With a totally not-American airbase girl on an island, surrounded by a fleet of totally not-Americans, including a few carriers. In the show, the fleet girls are fighting an uphill battle, vastly outnumbered with carriers Akage and Kaga being damaged but not being sunk, and Yamato taking a large combat role being one of the elements that shifts the tide of the battle. And this is not how Midway went down at all. The Americans did have a slight numerical superiority, but the Japanese ran into problems more with their plan of attack and overconfidence going in that cost them the battle. And this, combined with American code breaking providing the Japanese plans to the American command before the battle even started, is probably what won the United States the victory. I'm not a huge fan of the phrase miracle at midway. The battle was probably up for either side to win. The Americans just fought and conducted themselves better winning the battle. I'll probably have a video coming on this later. And that's why the tone of this final battle strikes me as so strange. Maybe we're talking about hindsight and the stereotype post-war of the United States Navy overwhelming the Imperial Japanese Navy, but regardless of intentions, the picture painted is objectively wrong. There are also smaller details that don't make any sense at all. Yamato was technically present at Midway, but never really got close enough to actually fight. 
The carriers Akagi and Kaga were heavily damaged as shown in the episode, but they didn't make it back alive. They were scuttled by Japanese destroyers once it was decided that they were most likely beyond repair for the situation that they were in. And I know this is kind of a weird hill to die on, because this is obviously not supposed to be a historical work, and I completely agree with you. I don't necessarily care about how wrong the show is or that it exists. The whole thing just strikes me as an incredibly weird way to come to terms with a dark time in your culture's past. The equivalent of this in the US would be something like teenage girls fighting for the South and winning the Battle of Gettysburg. Which is probably something I would watch just for the memes, but you have to sit back once you were done watching and be forced to reflect on what the intent was there. If there are any more series that strike this tone, let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of curious how common this sort of reconciliation is. As stated before, this is a custom video for Takao Aoki, a member at the highest tier on my Patreon, so thank you to them and all my patrons on Patreon, especially the ones on the screen. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.